FBI estimate that there are currently at least 250,000 cold cases in America alone. And this is one of them. Good evening. Every night. Good job, Walker with the Eagles. We can who has all that? Sunshine Harvest from Clarence. While all the other dealers just talk. She'd been strangled, stabbed, and raped in her pipe. I know the day would come when we would say goodbye. Feelings are bad and left to wither up and die. Our love turned to rust, broken hearts to die. Everyone who knew her, Loretta Jones was a popular, good-natured, caring young woman. And even with no real aspirations in life, she still managed to graduate from high school. It was shortly after that that she fell pregnant and was now a single mother. Needing her space, she moved into her own place, her and her four-year-old daughter. And like any young woman, Loretta Jones sought companionship, and she dated. It was a Wednesday night at about 8.30. That was the last time that Loretta was seen alive, and that was by her daughter, if you exclude her killer. The next day, at about 9 o'clock, Loretta was found by her daughter, lying expired on the living room floor. There was no signs of forced entry or a struggle, and there appeared to be nothing taken from the home. And still in her nightie, it didn't look like she'd been planning to entertain. Loretta's throat had been cut, She'd been stabbed multiple times in the chest and in the back. When word got out, the tight-knit community of Price was shocked by the brutality of the crime. And Loretta's family? Well, they were devastated. And they didn't have a clue who would want to hurt her. They knew Loretta was dating, but she generally kept her business to herself. When police spoke to her four-year-old daughter, she said she thought she'd heard her mom talking to her friend, Tom. It was on further investigation that the cops found out that early on the day of the murder, a man had attempted to abduct a 10-year-old neighbor off her bike, but her screams scared him away. When they checked Loretta's diary, they found a mention of a Tom that she had dated a couple of months earlier. And that Tom was Tom Egley, a reputed drifter and a loser who did occasional work for the railway. And by all accounts, or at least her diary's account, she didn't hold Tom in high regards and stopped seeing him after a couple of dates. The county coroner's report, released two weeks later, was able to give a clear picture what had happened that night. The weapon used was a standard steak knife no more than seven inches long. With the attack being brutal, cutting her throat and almost taking her head clean off. The coroner remarked that bizarrely, there was almost zero defensive wounds, except for a small cut on her left index finger. The young woman had had both vaginal and anal sex, and it wasn't consensual, because she was dead when it happened. And as for jizz, they found plenty of it, enough to make a jizz milkshake. But with DNA testing not even in its infancy, it was as useless as a pair of roller skates to a leg mental. It was three days later that cops brought in Egley, who'd been staying at a local dive motel and questioned him on the murder, and he denied it all. Because he'd been drinking at a local watering hole, and he had an alibi tighter than the Velcro strap on a cripple's boot. And while Egley was in custody, the police threw him into a lineup, and the ten-year-old neighbor who had almost been abducted fingered Egley. I guess the way that he was planning to finger her, saying he was the creep who tried to pull her into his car. But the judge only gave the potential pedo perpetrator three months. Which begs the question, why bother? 
A year had passed. They finally released Loretta's body and she was laid to rest. And the cops had to admit that even if they thought they knew who her killer was, they were never gonna catch him. And it looked like Heidi Jones would never see justice for her mother. And after a few more leads, that took him nowhere. And their only suspect, Tom Eggley, moving out of town. The case went cold. But it was 45 years later that Loretta's daughter, Heidi, in a Facebook group dedicated to her mother's murder, started chatting to old friends that she'd gone to school with. And one of them was a detective in the Price Police Force. And Heidi started telling him all the things that she knew about her mother's death. And I guess he must have been intrigued because he lobbied for the case to be reopened. And remarkably, his superiors granted that request. With the semen swabs they'd taken out of the body a long time ago lost, the detective wanted to dig up Loretta Jones. And his bosses and her family agreed. And after 45 years with the rod had set in, they dug her up, hoping to find some new evidence, which in theory was a good idea. But I guess they should have let Utah's seasonal rains in on that theory. Because all they found was a box full of black sludge. And if they were playing poker, a more sensible person would say that it was time to fold. But they continued their bluff until a former next door neighbor came forward on Facebook and told Heidi that the day after her mother's murder, the cops let her into the house to collect some of her possessions. And she remembers seeing the initials T.O. written in blood. And the friend just wanted to know why this had never been mentioned on the news. Because the T.O. could be the start of Tom, the creep who her mother had dated, the one who tried to abduct the neighbor. And that's when the penny dropped for Heidi and the cops. And it was then they convinced one of Tom's old acquaintances to turn rat and wire up. So you remember having sex with her and then what? I lost it and I cut her throat and I left. Legion Forever!